So now we can see the Scorpion is set up on our fixture. We have the rock lock base down here. We have our custom fixture and we have our Scorpion sitting up on its new pedestals that we just created. The next step here is to kind of address some of the difficulties with making this part. This is obviously a very ambitious part to make. There's not a lot of support and we're making it out of graphite. So it's going to be very brittle on top of being a very fragile model. We need to add in some places a little bit of help to keep the structure of this part sound and make sure it doesn't chip or break or fall apart. So we've identified three main areas that need a little bit of help. The first of those being the stinger tip. The cross section of this stinger is maybe a hundred thousandths or so. And there's a lot of parts still hanging off it that we need to support. So we need to add some bracing here. If we also look at the pincher, this whole arm is completely unsupported. This is actually outside of the tail, the longest unsupported part of the scorpion and there's two. So we decided to add a little bit of a pedestal to help support the pinchers. And finally, the actual claw opening our two millimeter ball end mill actually wants to fall inside some of these openings and it can't fit in some of the others. So it leads to a really strange appearing finished part. So we decided to kind of fill that up a little bit and make it a little more uniform. You'd never know when you look at the finished part it, that it does have a little extra structure there. So let's start with the stinger support. We've got a couple chains up here, little pieces of wireframe that we made. What I want to do is snap to my front view and run transform project this guy and this guy. I want to project them onto this mesh. And let's say move. So now what we can do is take these three wireframe cross sections and generate a pretty nice support surface. There are a couple ways to do this. I can run a surface loft and go surface one, two, three and we get something pretty nice. If I click on the surface once more, I can reverse the surface normal. The only reason I don't like this one is it doesn't really flow very well with the geometry of the tail. It doesn't look very natural. So what I ended up doing was actually snapping again to my front view and in 2D mode, setting my Z depth to the midpoint of that chain and creating a spline. If I do this and I kind of make this spline flow a little more naturally than what the loft did, I can run a surface sweep and I can sweep these three cross sections together along this chain. And now this you can see has a much more natural flow from the stinger itself. It does poke through. That's fine. I can run a surface offset here. And let's offset this maybe 10 thousandths and let's flip it the other way. So 10 thousandths pushes that surface just far enough inside the mesh to not have it poke through anywhere. But at the same time, if I turn this to the same color as the scorpion, it looks pretty natural and I don't think it would stand out. And that ended up being enough support to make the stinger tip. Next, we have the under claw supports. So what we did there was create a couple pieces of wireframe. And if we simply loft these together, so from one to two, we get a really just square and blocky support. If I turn off translucent mode, you can see it, it doesn't really flow very well. It actually gets really close to the, the, the foot over here. And we want to have some room to get a tool in there. So Let's not go with that. If I open up the right claw support plane and go translucent here, we can see the two ellipses we have as far as cross sections. I want to make a new ellipse in the middle of these two that necks down that surface. If I set my 2D Z depth to the bottom ellipse, that depth is minus 0.7. If I set it to the top, it's zero. So let's set the Z depth to minus 0.35 and we'll make an ellipse that's somewhat in the middle of these two. Under the rectangle drop down is ellipse. Aim roughly for the middle. We'll neck it down somewhat small. We can give it some rotation. And in here we can see 
nice ellipse in the middle. And from here we can run surface loft. Now you may have noticed before, let's, let's redo this again. Look at the start point of the first ellipse and the start point of the second. They don't line up. Traditionally in Mastercam that would be a problem. Let's say okay. And here's the problem, right? This, this surface twisted on itself. So there are new tools in Mastercam that help us get around that called dynamic syncing. If we turn that on, it actually does a really good job of cleaning up that really aggressive twist, but there is still a bit of a fold in the surface. I found in this case that using entity mode, and if I grab this middle entity, that fold goes away and we're left with a really nice organic surface that again, if I color this the same color as the scorpion, looks completely natural. It also keeps away from the foot so we can fit a tool in between the foot and that support. And again, this is exactly how we did it on the real part. This worked out really well. So finally, the last area of support we needed to address was in between the pincher itself. And in this case, we went ahead and just modeled a really rough 2D surface, right? This is a zero thickness surface. We need to thicken this into a solid body and add a little bit of material to it. Traditionally in Mastercam, you would have to run solids and thicken. The problem is you can't thicken a surface. You first must turn this from a surface into a sheet body using solids from surfaces and then run thicken. It's a multi-step process just to turn this surface into a thick solid body. But what we can do now is model prep push pull. I can take this surface and run push pull on it. Let's say 5,000 is thick. And now I am given a solid body where there once was a surface. So here let's grab this surface and let's just hide it for now. So we're left with nothing but that solid body. And I'll run model prep move and use that to kind of give some extra material to this surface that we just created. I move my gnomon toward the end of the surface so I can make a nice move where I can angle this body a little bit. Let's say I angle this by minus two degrees. Maybe go minus one even. And then same thing on the lower side. We need to move the gnomon to our start point. So let's angle it this way, slide the gnomon to the end go back into part mode. And again, from here, I can take an angle this, let's say two degrees. And we're left with, if I clear the surface colors, something that again, looks completely natural, yet will hold the two sides of the claw together and keep the tool from pinching inside. So with a little bit of additional geometry creation, we can take the scorpion and make it much more manufacturable without really changing the appearance and taking away from the effect of seeing such a cool part.